when the Most High Yah um, revealed to me that I should be keeping the Shabbat, and I didn't think it was a big deal. I'm like, hey, what's the Shabbat? It's the Sabbath. Instead of doing Sunday, we're just going to do Saturday or Friday, even the Saturday. I didn't think it was a big deal. And it's probably the thing that just that's 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 the number one thing what destroyed my uh, my first marriage. And so do you have perfect peace? I have perfect peace that passes all understanding. But you could not get that as a Christian? Hell no. Welcome to The Father State. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. The Father State, as I've said over and over again, is now on Patreon. So click the Patreon link in the description to support our work. Also, amazing news. You see this shirt, right? Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. And look. What the? And we also have a sticker. Brand new merch. Check it out on the fallenstate.tv store. I have with me a very, very, mama mia, hola, si, senor. Hold your wallet. Interesting guy. I have with me Kabir Baja Amila, the former NFL defense, defensive. Did I say your last name right? Baja, Baja Amila. Oh, man. Why would you the get G's, a normal the G, name? The, G, the G is silent. So, oh. <laughs> so if you take the D out, Baja Amila. Okay. I have with me Kabir Baja B. Amila, a former NFL defensive end for the Green Bay Packers. Kabir, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me, Jesse. Appreciate being here. You're welcome. So let me hear you pronounce your entire name because you don't have a normal name. Why don't you get an American name, man? What the? Because I'm not American. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my, my full name is Muhammad Kabir uh, Oluwari Raju Baja B. Amila. Whoa. So I like some, people, some people just say Kabir. Some people say KGB. Uh, <laughs> but you, you can call me Kabir, Jesse. <laughs> yes, sir. You have a, a bunch of names like Mexicans. Then they have like three or four names. Francisco, Alamia, uh, Martinez, Frances. It's a whole bunch of names. Thank well, you, man. Maybe, maybe, maybe the Nigerian. I'm a, I'm, I'm a Nigerian descendant. Both parents are from Nigeria, born and raised in Lagos, Nigeria. Really? How did yeah. you end up in L.A.? Uh, they, they, that's where they migrated. So I oh. was born. I was born on Los Angeles ground. Oh, okay, amazing. You were uh, drafted by the Green Bay Packers back in 2000. So you walking down the road, and they call you up and say. Um, Kabir, we want you. What was that? How old were you at the time? I was, I had to be about 22 years old. So what was, that, what was that like getting that call, we want you to create, play with us, the Green Bay Packers? Uh, I guess like what you would say, it was amazing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but uh, uh, actually, you know, obviously you got to go to college. I, I, in this case, I went to college. Right. And so my, you know, after my uh, fifth year in college at San Diego State University, um, I play, you know, I just had a good college career and, um, you know, went to the combine. And from there, uh, you kind of get an idea where you're going to get drafted. Not everybody's always drafted, but right. I was drafted in the fifth round. Uh, at that time they had two days. So I was drafted on the second day right and on. the first one from San Diego state. And so did you grow up knowing that you wanted to be a football player? <laughs> no, no, it's truly by the grace of uh, Yah that. I end up playing, I guess, if you want to call it that way, because at that time I didn't know him like I know him today. But um, I just wanted to grow up and be a plumber. I wanted to be a plumber like my father. My father was a, uh, a immigrant here. It was he, he did taxi cab, uh, collects uh, cardboards and did recycling type of stuff, and then eventually became a plumber, which I kind of remember my dad mostly. I used to work with my dad, so I used football. I just played football as a I was a rough kid, so I just thought it was a great opportunity to to put all my roughness and just, you know, here you got rewarded for destroying things. Right. At the house, you got you got a, a, a whooping for breaking the wall. So, That's right. uh, so anyway, but yeah, I just went to school to be a plumber, but I ended up being good enough to actually uh, get drafted. So it was truly by the, I just went to school to be a business major, to learn how to run a business. And uh, but I played good enough to actually get drafted by the Green Bay Packers. So did they tell you that or you realize you had become good enough to be drafted? I mean, I was good enough. I started I was a, I became a starter at San Diego State my sophomore year. Right. So I knew I was good enough. But I always had the attitude that 
I want to be the best wherever I'm at. So if I'm at college, I want to be the best college player. You, you had this mentality that when people were in college and they had the potential to go to the league, people start preparing for that and saving themselves on the level of the college level or whatever level they're at. Right. And they end up not being as good as they could have been because they were saving themselves for the next level. I was the kind of guy that when that time come, I'll deal with it. But right now I'm going to be the best football player. I'm going to give it all that I got. And if it comes, it comes. If I get injured doing my very best, I'd rather go out that way than trying to save myself and leave leave uh, you know great effort on the field uh, off the, you know on the field. So yeah. um, that was that was just my mentality. So when that time came, I did what I needed to do and to become draftable, and I got drafted. Amazing man! Yeah. So you grew up in LA. Where in LA did you grow? I'm, I'm in LA now, as you know. Where in LA did you grow up? Some people call it South Central Los Angeles, Crenshaw District. Oh, went to yeah. Crenshaw High School. Uh, went to Audubon, um, Dublin. They used to call it Dublin, but now it's Tom Bradley Elementary School. Uh, so I don't know where you at, but right. it's right there by USC. I mean, people don't know USC's in the hood. But, That's right. <laughs> but, uh, so you went to but, Crenshaw? Uh, you went to Crenshaw, you say? I went to Crenshaw High School. Right yeah. on. Um, yes. uh, I met, I met uh, Pico in La Cienica. And okay, I, okay, Pico. Okay, I know exactly where you are. Yes. Yeah, West LA. Man, you would not recognize those areas over there now. Uh, they have, t- hey. liberals have turned LA into a ghetto. It, it's, really? It's bad everywhere. It's awful. And so, what made you move? So, you grew up in a black area, predominantly black area, and then you moved to Wisconsin and you move into a white area. What was that like for you? Well, actually, before I went from L.A. to to Wisconsin, I went to San Diego. I went to San Diego State. So San Diego is where I went from there for five years. Oh, okay. Then um, I got drafted by the Green Bay Packers. And that's and I've been there ever since. It's been over 20 years. It's probably the longest place I ever lived. Uh, Living in it was I thought uh, it was a culture shock. It was a culture shock moving out here because by the time before it's changed now. But it was mostly just uh, Caucasians out here. And um, just the culture is different. Uh, people seem very friendly out here, very friendly, man. Yeah. The stuff that you see in the uh, movies, uh, the Andy Griffin show, you know, people come up and welcome you to the neighborhood, bring you cookies. I mean, you know, in LA back in the days, it was like, hey, are you trying to poison me or something? But here, <laughs> you know, people seem friendly, nice here. And uh, yeah. so it was a culture shock, but you get used to it. It's like a small town, it's, it's a country of, you know, they call it the cheese head. Uh, state or a title town. I mean, they really love their Green Bay Packers. So it was a culture shock coming from a big city to a small town. And so a lot of black people, uh, insecure blacks, they say, oh, when I'm around a lot of white people, I feel out of place or insecure. Did you ever get that feeling? Be- oh, yeah, most definitely. I've had that feeling. And and the way I was able to overcome that was I say I want to be a good representation of my people. And so my thing was I'm going to show them that something good can, can come out of the hood or LA or uh, the hood or whatever. And so my, my attitude was, I was going to make sure they had the best experience with somebody from my, um, my neck of the woods. My dad always instilled in me that I'm an ambassador. Wherever you go, you are the ambassador for the Baja Via Miller family. Yeah. You're the ambassador for the place you came from, the school you went to. So I always saw myself as an ambassador, but more importantly, I'm an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Amazing. And in October, 2007, I read that you broke the Green Bay Packers sack record with 69 sacks. Um, and the record was previously held by Reggie White, an NFL half, I mean, an NFL Hall of Famer. And so what did that mean to you to break the record? It meant a lot to me because Reggie White was somebody I looked up to. Still, I mean, obviously the late Reggie White yeah. I looked up to. And um, just because of his uh, his uh, stance on his faith, he was, a, he was known for being a... Uh, 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 a well-spoken uh, Christian or, you know, belie- a believer in Jesus right. Christ. Yeah. And he was also the minister of defense. They call him the minister of defense. So I played the same position he played. And so one of the goals when I got drafted, I had this thing that I do that whenever I start something, I always look to see where, what's my goal. And so one of the things I did, like I did at San Diego state, I looked at the back of the media guidebook, see who was the all time sack leader. I didn't know at the time it was Reggie White, but I saw his name on there. And I said, well, that's my goal. My literally my rookie year. That was my goal. Now, I don't know. I didn't know if I was going to do it or not, but I made that my goal. So I did everything in my power to train, to eat right, to do everything right, to be able to break that record. So when I broke it, it was a it was a great feat. Did you ever meet Reggie White? 
Yes, I got to befriend Reggie White. I actually, uh, even before he passed away, he um, came to the games, gave me some pointers, um, even talked to him, even when he came into the truth, when he uh, started keeping the Torah, keeping the commandments of God, he, he, he actually revealed that to me in my rookie year, which was my second year as a Christian. Um, I'm no longer a Christian, but when I was a Christian, he brought that to my attention and it, and it really was intriguing. But uh, at that time, uh, my uh, wife at that time, um, she, she thought that that was heretic or uh, legalistic or legalism, I, you know, because I came from a Muslim background. So because of my Muslim, maybe that's why she said it, would, it, uh, it was intriguing. So, um, but we did talk um, a lot over the phone and everything, but unfortunately he uh, passed away yeah. um, as he, he, he was coming into the truth. So yeah, yeah, I remember that. How many seasons did you play in the NFL? I played nine seasons, played nine, uh, well, nine seasons. I would just say it officially, but my last season was half the season. So, but I get credit for nine seasons. Right on. And uh, I wanted to ask you at one point during your career, there was a big disagreement between you and your teammate, a guy by the name of Aaron Roger, mm -hmm. and according Rogers. And according to the Sports Illustrator, the team was in the locker in the locker room during training camp, when you said, if this locker room blew up, 99% of you guys will go to hell. What the? Uh, what the? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was. It, is that, you know, let I, me ask first, did that really happen? That did happen, yes. That, that really did happen. And so what made you say it, and why did the room erupt? Well, um, it was actually it was actually at the it was at the uh, dorm where we were staying for training camp. It was on the court. It was in the court. It's in the it's a Ford. It's it's an enclosed uh, uh, dormitory at a college that we stay for training camp. And me and some guys just got into a disagreement. And I was just trying to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, you know, I read the Bible. I've read the Bible eight times in my lifetime right now. Um, and um, and at that time when I was going through my reading, you know, I read every day. And I was trying to, you know, trying to save my teammates. I love my teammates. <laughs> the Bible says to love your neighbors and stuff like that. And so I was trying to just get people saved and uh, tell them that they need to repent and turn from their wicked ways. And, and somebody asked me and say, well, I said, well, if this place blew up right now, 99% of the people will be, uh, will all go to hell. Right. And it got people to, to, to at least consider. I mean, it was kind of exciting. But then when you're in it, you, you don't like being persecuted because you want to be liked. Right. But people literally was thinking like, man, is he serious? So then all these people <laughs> on the team start going to other Christians on the team. They say, I've never heard a Christian talk like this. Even Reggie White, uh, there was even more, even Reggie White never spoke like this. And, <laughs> and they were just wondering, is it true what he's saying? And some people agreed with me because of the word. And some people disagreed or disassociated himself from me. He said, well, that's not how I come at it and stuff like that. So Aaron Rodgers just felt that, uh, at that time that um, if this is what Christianity is about, then I don't want to have anything to do with it. So he was saying I was a poor representation of Jesus Christ as a disciple of Jesus Christ because I was trying to provoke people into good works. <laughs> and so were you offended by their reaction? Did that get you upset or did you feel uh, like you were the only one in there? Or how, was, how was that yeah, for you I was, personally? I, obviously, obviously I was um, uh, hurt. Because I was more hurt more by the Christians than I was by the people that didn't know the truth. Right. And right. when the people who said they were Christians uh, did not support me, it was very few people that publicly supported me. If anything, they distanced themselves from me. And so that was hurtful because I thought we were on the same team. We're, we're about, this, about, the, about our father's business. Um, so that was hurtful. But, you know, like I said, Jesus warns us in John 16 that I tell you this, that don't be offended. <laughs> no. People will kick you out of the churches. Things are going to happen, you know, so but it still hurt. I mean, I'm a human being, you know. Yeah. And um, and so, yes, I was hurt. But it was mostly by Christians that uh, that I felt that I was uh, betrayed by during that time. And so are you and Aaron Rodgers friends now? No, no, no. We, we I mean, I don't have an issue with Aaron Rodgers. And I don't know what Aaron Rodgers thinks about me, but uh, Aaron Rodgers is doing Aaron Rodgers, and I'm doing, uh, I'm doing the things that uh, pleases to God. And so you said that you read the Bible eight times. Yes, from just from cover to cover. Yes, That's I did it. It took, me, it, took, it took me about two years. I was averaging two years to and, do it. And so, did you become a Bible thumper? I don't know what a Bible thumper is, but I do love that word. So, if, if that's good. 
and that's me, I guess. But I don't know what a Bible thumper is, but uh, <laughs> but I do. I try to obey the word, and and, and um, I live by the word. So you never heard of a Bible thumper? I've heard of it, but I don't really know what it means. I never use that term, so I don't. I mean, but I probably was been. I, I will tell you this much: I probably been accused of being a Bible thumper, but <laughs> I don't know what it, I don't. I never read it in the Bible that thou should not be a Bible thumper. So, <laughs> I, 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 no one's ever given me a clear definition of what that is. I've seen a movie actually where the woman took the Bible and beat the and hit somebody in the head across <laughs> it. I've never done that, so I don't know what a Bible thumper is. So, a Bible thumper is a, a man or a woman who read the Bible all. The the time and they learn it intellectually and all they do is quote the scriptures but their hearts have not been renewed they don't know god they just know about him well i'll say that i do know about god but more so i know about him because i keep his commandments and it says in john and i'm gonna quote the scripture here but it clearly says in john <laughs> 2 that if you know you know that you know him if you keep his commandments so i do know him but uh, i live it uh, this is my lifestyle um, this is part of our culture. This is a, I'm, I'm, I'm one of his people. So right. I don't know what that, if that's, if that's a bad thing, then, uh, that I, I don't mind being bad then. Do you I'm have anger? Bad man. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anger? Anger? Uh -huh. uh, I don't, I don't live with anger. I used to before I got delivered, uh, by the grace of God, but I don't, I don't live in anger, but I can get angry just like Yah gets angry when he see things that are not right or pleasing in his sight but I don't live with anger. And so do you have or, anger? I, when you say I have anger, what do you mean? Uh, do you have anger within you? Is it inside of you at all? I, I can be angry, but I don't live. I'm, I'm not a, I'm, if you know me, I'm not a guy that gets, it takes a lot to get me angry. Right. Um, I'm very patient. Um, I would say, um, but I can't get angry, but I haven't been angry in a long time. I think the last time I was uh, truly angry is with my ex-wife, and but other than that, yeah. I, I don't I don't live like that. I, I live a, such a peaceful life. The last three or four years, I've been uh, in the way, keeping the commandments of Yah. I've been around people who are like-minded, who loves Jesus. Uh, so, if anything, I live a, a life of peace. Is it normal for a man to get angry? It, it is. Is it normal? I, it depends on what it is. If somebody sleeps with your wife, you will be angry. That that's a natural response. But why would uh, but you why would you get angry about that? Because he's being he's being transgressed against, and so that's a natural thing. But the Bible is I, I don't know where you're what angle you're coming from, but according to the Word, it says uh, be angry but sin not. So it's not a sin to get angry. Anger. When I think of anger, when and, and I and I know what you're talking about, I think, but when I think of anger, I think of a trigger. It's a trigger. So that means something is is an unmet expectation. So if the if something is not being uh, met that you expect, that's what will cause you to be angry. So really, when you get angry, you should look back to see what's causing it. Anger is a secondary emotion. So whatever the primary is, that's really where you the root is. So it's kind of like a like a, a barometer on a car. I know my car is on E because the, the the thing went to E. So now I know what's going on in the tank. So right. anger just means that something is going on that's a conflict or whatever that is. So I don't live like that anymore, but I once did. I mean, there was a time in my life for 40, almost 40, uh, I'll say 30 something years that I did live with that type of anger, but I have been delivered by the grace of Yah from that, uh, from living in anger. That football was a great tool for me to be able to get um, my anger out on people. So I couldn't take it out on people. So, but in the game, I got paid millions of dollars to take my anger out on somebody and the fans go crazy and everything like that. But you can't live like that. It's not healthy. And I don't recommend that. And so is it normal, abnormal for a man to have anger, period? If you say it's normal, that is the norm out there. I mean, people live in anger. That's that is that is the norm. I don't think it's healthy. So are you saying it's, yes, it's normal for a man to have anger? When you say normal, that is the norm. I know, but, but I'm asking, is it normal for a man to have? I realize that it is quote unquote the norm nowadays, but is it <laughs> normal for a man to have anger? I don't think it's natural for us to live because Yah did not create us to be angry. He did not create us to be that way, but it is normal because you got people 
uh, women not in their roles. You got children uh, growing up without fathers in their home. So there's a lot of stuff, people being molested or abused. And so when you have that, you're going to be, uh, you have a propensity to live in anger. And a lot of people are wounded from their childhood. And so because of that, that's why so many, that's why it's the norm. But I think the right question is, is it, is it natural? It's not natural. Just like there's a lot of stuff that people do that are not natural. That's now the norm. So how did you become angry? You weren't born angry. How did you become angry? Uh, I think because of the, the, the things that I perceived that were childhood wounds, you know, from, uh, you know, rejection uh, from the womb, rejection from mom, uh, not meeting those expectations, um, just being hurt, you know, being rejected. I was picked on, you know. Uh, people made fun of my name, says your parents was drunk when they named you cut, 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 <laughs> beer or Nigerian, <laughs> Nigerian booty scratcher. You know, just I mean, these are stuff that I grew up with growing up. So even though I was, quote unquote, black, uh, I grew up in the environment. Huh? I said, what? Uh? Yeah. So I grew up in the environment where I got picked on, made fun of just because I was different. So even though I, we looked the same, but because of. My, I couldn't hide that I'm a Nigerian descendant. My parents, I didn't, you know, I wasn't good at, I mean, I could speak English, but I wasn't like, you know, I just, it's just a different culture. So even though I grew up, uh, you know, around American folks and stuff like that, but I did not, I had a different culture. I had a Nigerian culture that I grew up with more right. so. Did you know that any male that has anger is a woman? I did not know that. No. So that means you a woman too? That's the nature of a woman when a man has, you know how God said we must be born again? Yes. And so what he's saying is that we are born innocent, but we are born into a screwed up family where the okay. mother, the fact that you're born through the woman and say to her daddy, you're going to take on part of her nature anyway, because you're, blo- you're born of the water and blood and water. And so hmm. you take on the woman's nature because Satan is the woman's daddy. And then what the mother tend to do is impose her will on you when you're a kid, and she caused you to become angry. She'll turn you away from your father. she impose her will. And when you become angry, you become like her. You take on her nature, and you become angry like a female. You have an illogical mindset. And uh, uh, when they turn you away from the father, you take on their identity. And that's why we must be born of the spirit so that we can return to the Father. And when we return to the Father, then we no longer have anger. We have a logical mindset instead of an illogical mindset, which is of the, a logical mindset is of the Father. Illogical Mm -hmm. mindset is of the woman. That's why we must be born again of the Father. There will come a day when I return the children to the fathers and the father to the children. You must be born of the Spirit. You're first born of water and and blood, now you must be born of the spirit, which is of the father. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, there's, some things, <laughs> yeah, <that> very, <laughs> there's some things in there that I agree with and some things I don't agree with. What but, part uh, that you don't agree with? Um, that, um, I mean, you said a lot. There was a mouthful, but I think the part that I don't agree with is that, um, that uh, being angry means you're a woman because it, it's that's a female nature. You're not like. A woman, you're still a male, but you have the, you have the woman's identity. Your mother took your father's identity away by imposing her will on you and caused you to become like her by making you angry. So when Jesus turned the table over, but he was acting like his mother, or like a woman. No, because he wasn't. Belly. Jesus was not of the flesh; he was of the spirit. He was created in his father's image, and so he was logical. And you could take strong action. Without being angry. Matter of fact, you're going to always take the right a- action when you're not angry. So he was logical. He had discernment. And so he saw evil and dealt with it. But angry people overreact and they, you know, they carry because they ju- all people who have anger judge. And all those who judge are playing God. And all those who play God are sinning. And you're saying why- that you, so you're saying it's okay for Yah. Or God, I'm just, I don't know, if, when I say Yah, I'm saying Yahweh, but when you're saying, is it okay for, for God to be angry? Because there's many times, uh, not, not many times, but you know, Moshe, Moses, stopped him and recanted, please remember what you promised 
when he wanted to destroy Israel for worshiping and the idols, you know, idols and things like that. So I'm just saying God no, He himself, was never angry like a human anger. Human anger is of the devil, but he has he was discerned, he was of discernment. He can see you have, injustice you, you and deal with me, it. You have to show me that one in the Bible. I, I don't know if anger is from the devil. I know that man can get angry. If you notice, yeah. there is no love and anger. That's not true. That's with not the true. love and anger. Oh, uh, there's love and anger? Where is yeah. love and anger? I, I'll say that when you love somebody, I mean, because the people that tend to can cause me to get angry the most are the ones that I love, the ones that I'm the closest to. Somebody off the street calling me something or what that that doesn't that really doesn't bother me. You I, I've been called even on the football field. I remember a guy called me a nigger. Right. And I just kind of laughed because I know he's just trying to that is, he, he talk he talked about my mama. I don't even know this guy. He just tried to get me to jump off sides or yeah. do something crazy. Yeah. So those things don't bother me. But when somebody that you have expectations of and um and have a commit committed relationship, it could be a father, a son relationship, a wife, a husband relationship. When they let you down, that's when anger, I notice in me, when that can happen. Well, that would not happen if you had no expectation of them. You love them with the Father's love, with no expectation. And so if they turn against you, it wouldn't matter. You can take it or leave it. And because real love has no expectation from anyone. It comes through the Father, through Christ, through the, through the man, to the woman, to the children. And so you're giving out love. Because your love comes from God and you have no expectation. So if your your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister, your friends turn against you, it wouldn't bother you. You can take it or leave it because your identity come direct from God and not anyone or anything else. Well, I, I, once again, I would have to uh, disagree. I hear what you're saying because I used to think more like you. But I like, for example, I have a woman, what the world would call a wife. But I have a woman who I have a son with. And I expect her to obey me. When she doesn't obey me, it, it could cause me to be angry or upset with that. Um, so I have expectations of people to do things now. And um, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, say, hey, how come you didn't? When I told you to do something, I expect you to do it. Yeah. And if it's not meant, there's nothing wrong with having But you're supposed to correct people. your wife, but not with anger, with perfect love. Because yeah. what you don't realize is that the woman's God is Satan. And and the man's God is God. But Jesus. what happened is when you when your mother caused you to become angry, the woman become your God. And that's why men can't deal with women in the right way until they overcome their mothers, because every woman you get involved with is mama. You become attracted to what you uh, hate. And so you you be, you are subject to that that you hate. So that's why men, when they get involved with women, they become the boy and she become the mama because they have not overcome their mothers. Well, Jesus got angry when people wouldn't even have faith. And he, and he says, bring the boy to me when they couldn't, he, when they said they couldn't heal somebody. He said, how long must I be with you? Bring him to me. Now, we, you know, when we watch movies, they may make it tone it down. But Jesus, he, he, he actually berated his uh, disciples uh, basically cussed them out, you know, and got on them. And when I say cussed them out, not cursing, but yeah, I mean, he got, got on them very harshly. Um, is even the Bible says rebuke sharply. So I, I, I hear what you're saying. I think that anger can't, you can't sin in anger. That's true. But to be angry in itself is not a sin. It's how you respond in your anger. But it's a spirit that made a home in you that came through your mother and you have no control of it because we can't, of ourselves, we can do nothing. And of ourselves, we know nothing. So you cannot support, you cannot control the spirit. That's why you have to return to the Father. And then greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. He would take care of the spirit. But let me ask, this was so interesting to me. You were raised Muslim and you converted to Christianity. Then you became an Israelite. What was it like being Muslim first? Well, I would say that the type of uh, the, the type of Muslim I was, I was not a uh, I was more of a like what they call a creaster. <laughs> so I wasn't a devout Muslim, but my dad was a Muslim. My mom was a Christian. So I actually grew up going to church, to be honest with you. But I wanted to be more like my dad. And right. so it was, and so I was more of a Ramadan Muslim. I was not a I didn't fi I didn't pray five times a day. 
Uh, the only time I did any type of Muslim thing was during the, t- during the month of Ramadan, where you fast d- at, during the day, eat at night. Um, so I can't, but I, that, that's how I identify myself. I wanted oh, to I identify see. myself to my dad's uh, religious Why did he I, stop your mother from taking you to church to be a Christian? I mean, if he was a Muslim and you wanted to be like him, why did he stop your mother? Because my, that's just the type of, that's the, that's the agreement they had. Um, my mom, my mom grew up Muslim. And when she, when she came to America, she eventually converted to Christianity. And, um, and they didn't have a lot in, you know, in LA now, and LA is totally different now, but during the time I was growing up, there wasn't a lot of mosque around. Right. I remember the the one yeah. that they have on, um, I don't know where it is, but it's kind of near USC area or whatever. I can't think of the street right now. I remember when they were building that. I remember when they were raising money to build that uh, uh, that mosque that you see, that big mosque in Los Angeles. But uh, we didn't have a lot of stuff. I remember my dad taking me to Arabic school to try to learn Arabic. But like I said, there was not a lot of resources. Right. But when it came to Christianity and keeping children out of you know gangs and things of that nature, Christians had more of a... Uh, the resources to to put children in so that you know so it just my dad just came to a country that just didn't have a uh, wasn't muslim friendly at that time and so what was it like being a christian being a christian um you know when i first became a christian it was great you know i thought it was great i was reading the bible but the longer i the longer i became a, uh, the longer i was a christian the more i saw seeing the the more i started seeing the hypocrisy in christianity because the stuff I was reading wasn't matching what, I, what was being preached, what was being lived out. Uh, it seems like when you read the Bible as a patriarch, when you listen to Christians as a matriarch, uh, things revolve around Jesus. In the Christianity, things revolve around a woman and her happiness, happy wife, happy life mentality. It was just a hypocrisy. And, um, and obviously, even in my own situation, I, I met head on when I finally, when, when, uh, when the Most High Yah, um, revealed to me that I should be keeping the Shabbat. And I didn't think it was a big deal. I'm like, hey, what's the Shabbat? It's the Sabbath. Instead of doing Sunday, we're just going to do Saturday or Friday, even the Saturday. I didn't think it was a big deal. And it's probably the thing that dest- that's, that's, that's the number one thing what destroyed my, uh, my first marriage. So when, uh, you were, when, when you were a Christian, you judge God based on the Christians? No, no. I, that's, so- the first thing, that's the first thing I told myself not to do. Because I remember when I was when I was a Muslim um, challenging, I used to debate with Christians when I was a Muslim. So when I was in high school, college, I was a Muslim. I identified myself as a Muslim. And I used to debate with Christians. And I used to poke holes in their face. Well, how is this? And, what? and they never could answer any of my questions. And so I always thought like, man, my, and my dad told me, just ask one question of a Christian and watch. And that's what I used to ask. I say, okay, if you, what was the question I used to ask? I said, um, I said if you were a Christian, um, I don't even know what I used to ask. I used to right. ask a question that would stump them. You know, it was a question that went, and they couldn't answer the question. They said, let me get back to you or this or that. And they never could get back to me. And I always just felt like, whew, man. That, but then finally I did meet somebody that uh, actually read their Bible. And I asked him that question. He said, if you sit down, I will show you. I said, show me where Jesus Christ said he's God. That's the question. I said, show me where Jesus Christ said he's God. And no one could answer that question. For years, no one could answer that question. And finally, I met a guy my rookie year with the Green Bay Packers. He actually sat down, told me to shut up, sit down. It was a short white guy, you know, you want to, for description purposes. And I remember sitting down and he was showing me something in the Bible. I wasn't prepared to go to the next round. I'm just used to just knocking people out the first round. Right. And it caused me to now go home. I said, never again will that happen. I went home that day and I said, I'm not going to take my dad's argument anymore. I'm going to read the Bible myself and I'm going to prove it wrong. I'm going to show Christians <laughs> why they're wrong. And I started in the Old Testament because I because a lot of Christians at that time, during my time uh, uh, debating, they always discouraged me from reading the Old Testament. They said, read the New Testament. So I said, man, there's some dirt there's some dirt in the Old Testament. So I started in Genesis. I didn't know where to start. Started in Genesis. And it was there that I realized that I was a sinner. It was there that I realized that, that I did not deserve to go to heaven. Because in, in Islam, you know, your works, if you do a lot of good, and, 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 and I thought I was good. But when I was reading the Bible, literally, my good was coming down and all my iniquity was being exposed just by reading the word. And so that's me- what I accepted Jesus Christ as my master and savior. Okay. And so... When I converted, that's why I said that I am not going to judge Christianity based off of Christians, so-called Christians. 
I'm going to judge it based off of the word. Was your and mother was, a perfect example of a Christian? I would not say so. She was not? I would not say so. No, she was not. And then you became an Israelite. What is an Israelite? The same thing that Jacob was, uh, the same thing. Oh, Jacob was an Israel. He, he started the Israelite. But the same thing as uh, um, Jesus, uh, uh, Paul, uh, all the people, the, the patriarchs. So, just, uh, I'm, so what I'm is Israelite. that exactly? In short, because of time, what is it? Um, it's the same thing as you, you probably identify as being an American. I'm, I'm, I'm an Israelite. Uh, I'm, I'm from the, I'm from the line of Yehuda. So that's, I believe I'm, I'm, I'm from one of those lineage and, and, and that makes me a, an Israelite. Why did you leave the Muslim religion? I left Muslim because the Bible showed me that Muslim was not the right way. What did it say? In what way is not the right way? In, in Genesis, it talks about, uh, uh, um, you sin from the beginning, you know, and from a childhood and, and, and after the flood, he says, never again will I destroy the earth because of men, because their heart is wicked above all things. And I realized that my heart was wicked. And once I realized that was wicked, I all of a sudden realized that I needed Jesus. I need, because Christianity never showed me why I needed Jesus, right. but, when it, but it was in the old Testament that I recognized that I needed Jesus. And so I, I surrendered my, I surrendered my life to him. So, and so and the Muslims it, say that uh, you don't sin, is that right? No, they don't say that. Oh. No, they don't say that. They don't. They don't even practice. They don't even believe that themselves. No. Oh, okay. They, do they believe you do sin? They believe. Yes, they do believe that that you can sin. And yes. so, real fast, what is exactly is an Israelite? I, I, it's, it's Israelites are people who derive from Israel, who was once called Jacob before his name changed. Oh, so, so an Israelite. So ahead. that's what Israel. An Israelite is just a, it's a lineage. I come from the line of. Uh, 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 from Jacob. I mean, from you got Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, who became Israel. So I come from that lineage. And so, uh, is it the black people who think they're the first Jews or something? Original Jews or first Jews or something like that? I I I, I come from I come from Jacob. But I'm just trying to uh, because I've heard of this a lot. But is this the the blacks who think that they're the first Jews or something like that? When you say think of, that's like saying that I think, would, it, would you say that I think that I'm a Baja Bia Miller? Would you, would you question if I told you I'm a Baja Bia no, I'm just trying to understand what is it. Is, is that the same group that think that they're the Jews? It's the same thing that you read in your Bible. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, who became Israel, that group. So uh, I'm, I'm from the line of, I'm from the line of Jacob. And so do you have perfect peace? I have perfect peace that passes all understanding. But you could not get that as a Christian? Hell no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to ask you, the time is going by so fast. You belong to... Straightway. You're an Israelite, so you belong to Straightway Truth Ministry. Yes, yeah, Straightway Truth Ministry led by uh, Pastor Charles Dow Jr., an amazing pastor uh, who literally couldn't do what most pastors could do for me back in my days when I was in Christianity. Most, most pastors felt like they couldn't help me because I had money. I was famous. And a pastor pretty much treated me and says, hey, I don't have uh, silver and gold, but what I do have is uh, the gospel. And, and he helped me in ways that uh, uh, it's just amazing. I'm, I'm indebted to him. I thank Yah for a uh, pastor. He's truly a Jeremiah 315 pastor. And I, I think you should interview him because he's a uh, He's a he's a he's a wonderful man. What does you became a community uh, head with straightway? What's a community head? Well, uh, we have we have an assembly here in Wisconsin. Here in Wisconsin, uh, um, I am the I represent Straightway Truth Ministry. It's called Straightway Praise Land, um, but I'm still underneath the umbrella of uh, Pastor Dow with Straightway Truth Ministry. And not every assembly have this, but our assembly is a community. So. I live with other people. We live according to Acts 2 and 4, where everybody has everything in common, and I'm the head of that oh. community. So, yeah, so, so everybody in your community are Israelites. Yes. And, um, and, and, and they are not black, too. So just to <laughs> let you know. <laughs> Do you believe, as an Israelite, you believe that a man can have more than one wife? Absolutely. Uh, our ancestors had more than one wife. Abraham, Moshe, Moses, uh, it, Jacob. And so do you have more than one? I know you guys don't believe in getting married, so the woman just come in, right? 
No, 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 no. <laughs> so like, like, like I, I will say that I personally have two lawful wife and one legal ex-wife. Right. And uh, yeah, so my, my, so out of those two, one of them is a legal, legally we had divorced, but I never gave her a bill of divorce. So she's still my, my woman, but she's committing adultery. I want to get to that. So right now you have two Israelites. I mean, two, yeah, Israelite wives living with you? I don't have two Israelites. I have one Israelite wife, and I have one that's gone rogue. <laughs> one Israelite wife, that, that's the one that you divorced? No, that's the heathen. That's the, oh, you uh, had two Israelite wives, and then one of them left as well? No, 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 no. I had a wife in Christianity. Right. And it's, when I started keeping the Shabbat, she departed. Right. And she legally divorced me. Right. And how many Israelite wives do you have right now? I only have one. Do you want more? Absolutely. I'm trying to have 94 children, of course. Whoa. How old are you? I'm 43. Well, you better get busy, man. What the? Hey, that's, that, that's why you need more women. <laughs> <laughs> It says be fruitful, multiply. <laughs> and so are you, are they going to all live with you? Absolutely. All the I mean, women going to live in the same house? They don't have to live in the same, they will live in the same uh, land. They'll live on the same land as me. because. Oh, you, I see. They, yeah. So, so they'll, they'll live in the same community and you just go house to house, satisfying them. Or they can come to my 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 room, my house, and, and, and I'll so, satisfy them too. Oh, amazing. No wonder yeah. you're yeah. Israelite. No, <laughs> actually, my dad, my mother, and my father both grew up in polygynous homes, so Whoa. it's part of my heritage. Yeah. Do you ever get tired of sex? You just don't want to have it no more. <laughs> I, you don't only have one woman that I'm living with right now, but yeah, I, I am. I don't. I don't live to have sex, but I mean, it's 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 amazing when you get when you do it. But I don't. I'm about my father's business, but. That's not, that's not, that's not why a man, like for me, that's not why I want women. I do want to have children. I did have eight. I was about to say, in your first marriage, the one that you divorced with, that mm -hmm. divorced you, you had eight kids with her. How many boys and how many girls? Actually, I had, I didn't have kids. Kids are goats, but I know what you mean. But I had seven sons <laughs> and one daughter with my, uh, my first wife. And, um, and so I don't have contact with them. I haven't talked to them in three years because the Christian pastors, several of them in this area that I donated millions of dollars to told her to leave me uh, because I wanted to keep the Shabbat Christian pastors. I mean, this is, this is on a national level from focus on the family to, uh, to Rodi Bakum to uh, you name it. I mean, they told her to leave me just because I wouldn't stop keeping the Shabbat. And so when you lose a whole generation and you know, for me, you have to understand my heritage, yeah. we believe on, having children. We believe in being fruitful, multiply. We believe in training them up in the way they should go. So when you lose that, for me being 43, I started when I was 24. I'm 43 now. I'm not going to wait 16 years to try to produce that. So the only thing that makes sense is polygyny. What so that I can, because I want to leave a righteous seed so that I can train them up in the way they should go so they can train the next generation and they're, and they're living for Jesus. So you don't see your kids at all? Uh, I do not, I don't see my sons and daughter at all. No. And how is that for you personally, not being able to see them? Um, I, I'm, I'm used to it now. I've gotten used to it. It was not easy in the beginning. It was very hard, very hard uh, to let them go. But uh, once again, the only way that I can see my sons and my daughter will require me to denounce Jesus Christ, because that's what Christians in this area in Green Bay, a whole bunch of white folks, that's what they require me to do. I have to be willing to bow my knees to a man in black robe or a woman in black robes. I got to be willing to bow my knees to a Christian, bona fide, respected Christian in this community and, and, and bow down to her and get her permission to see my sons and daughter. And I, I can't do it because I only, yeah. only serve one. And that's Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And so it wasn't in court that said you can't see your children. It was the preachers who told you that? It's just by her action. She's the one that she's the petitioner. She petitioned the court. Oh, okay. And so the way the system is set up, it sets you up to acquiesce and capitulate to a woman. And I am not going to acquiesce and capitulate to any woman. Oh. So even if it means to see my seed. I, I, Jesus says to be my disciples, you have to hate your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your wife, and your children and your life. And so 
I just can't do it. So for me to do it will require me to submit to her, and I can't do it. This guy that's over in the Israelite ministry where you are now, you say he's over you, right? He, 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 he's over me, yes. So what is it like to submit to a man? <laughs> it's normal. I, I played football. <laughs> I, had, I, I submitted to head coaches, my father, then head coaches, my whole my whole life. And this is the first time I get to submit to a righteous man. But well, why, man why not so, submit to God and submit to no man? I follow Pastor Charles Dow Jr. as he follows Christ. There's but why don't you follow that. Christ and not follow him? Because God is our God, not any human being. And as an adult man, why don't you... Because the same God that's showing him would show you. Why do you need to be under him to know God? Because Yah, Yah led me to Pastor Dow. Yah led him. But led not for you to, to be him. under him, though. That's not true. You don't know that. I mean, um, Paul had people follow him. Um, so Pastor Dow has been doing this for over 30 years. 30 years he's been in this truth. I'm just, I've been doing this for four years. And everything that I know and learn has come from that man. So for me to... Uh, to abandon him and to not submit to him. He's the well, one I'm not that telling you not to from... work with him, but the same God that is showing him, why can't that same God direct you? Why do you have to go to another man rather than, and I understand that he probably, it sounded like he was a good example, so you went to him and he was able to help you. But you're when, not when the supposed pastors wouldn't help me. You're not supposed to be under any man. You're an adult and, and you're the son of God, right? So why can't your father, God, show you, why does he have to go through another man to show you? Once you find God, why do you need to? You can work with him but not have him over. You shouldn't have anyone ahead of you but God. Well, the way I look at it is in my own free will, I choose to submit myself to Straightway Truth Ministry and the person that's leading as Pastor Dow. I don't have to, but I want to. And I and, and it's been a joy. It's been the greatest thing. It's been the greatest thing that I've ever done is to be able to be a part of a ministry that really practice what they preach. What and would so, happen if you if you had no man over you but God? What do you think would happen to you if God was your head? Yeah, he is my head. He, not, he, not only that preacher. It, that's like saying that is that that's like saying to a wife. That why don't you just submit straight to Jesus? No, well, why should you submit to her husband because exactly, she came but, from but, the but, man? I know, but if she submits to me, she is submitting to Jesus. So as I submit to Pastor Dow, I am submitting to Jesus. So I'm so sorry, man. Obey, but I, obey I, those who rule over you. You should know that. I, I'm, I'm so sorry, but I, I, I got so many other things I want to know from you. So quickly, what's your impression of uh, Black Lives Matter? My impression is that they don't do they don't care about black people. It's a, it's a they use the agenda to do their to their do their homosexual um, agenda. That's when you look at their tenets, it's more about uh, gays and feminism than it is about black people. Are you so. surprised that there are men and women following a bunch of fat black radical lesbians who are, who admit to being Marxists and all that? Are you surprised that people are following them and believing them? I am not surprised. There's many people there to see many. The road that leads to destruction is broad, and very, very many people are going there. It was really, surprise. It was really nice, and I was surprised when you contacted me, and uh, it really was nice to hear that. What made you contact me? Something that something that you said when you were interviewing somebody. I just felt like, man, this guy sounds like because your line of question, the way you ask questions, it's like you know the Bible. And a lot of these Christian pastors show how they're hypocritical. You was asking one guy about uh, his wife. You asked him, do you rule your wife? He says, well, I rule the house. And the wife kept on saying, <laughs> well, he doesn't rule me. He, you know. And so you were trying, you kept on staying there because you wanted him to, to say that. And so, I mean, I saw the one that you did with uh, Pastor Gino. And uh, he tell you, I, I rule my wife. I, yeah, yeah, I rule my wife. And he said, man, I haven't heard that in a long time. So just some of your stance. A lot of the, some of them that I agree with, you know, I, I actually and I did. I just realized I just found out today that you've been doing this for a very long time. I think I saw something where you were on Fox yeah. with Hannity or whatever. I'm like, wow. And so I got to see what you I just didn't know. I just was just by your line of question. I just assumed that 
I just want to know what you believe because I didn't know. I didn't even know. You know, when I talked to you, I found that you were a pastor. I didn't yeah. even know yeah. that. So yeah, I've been yeah. doing this for thirty-one years now. Wow. So, so yeah. Any any uh, with the little time that we have left, anything that you want to ask me about or that you disagree with me that I should you would like me to explain or make it different uh, a little clearer. I think the stuff that you talk about, like, first, of all, I just want to give all praise to the Most High Yah. I want to thank my pastor, because uh, he's he, he literally taught me how to, to be a man of Yah. Uh, but the question I have for you is, I, I know what you're talking about, the whole anger thing about the, the mother and things of that nature. The thing that I disagree with is you make it a blanket statement saying that this is everybody. And I have to disagree because I know where you're coming from. And I think most of the time you're right on that. But to say everybody... I have to disagree with that because you can't be angry and it has nothing to do with the issue you have with your mom. It could just be righteous anger. I mean, the Bible talks about righteous anger. So well, I just, I guess I want to know what you meant by, by that. And then another thing you talked about is uh, racism. I don't know how you feel about it. You said that racism don't exist. Right. I don't agree with that too, because I've experienced racism here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. So I don't know. And I'm a guy that believes in taking your, uh, your bootstrap. I don't know if I'm saying it right yeah. <laughs> and doing yeah. it. And I, I told you my attitude was I'm going to prove them wrong. Yeah. And yeah. when, when it came down to, when I wanted to keep the Shabbat with all my, with my great reputation, I could have ran for governor of Wisconsin and with my great reputation, the money I gave, the, the, the way my children was well behaved, you would think they would have supported me and they actually helped to destroy my family. I went to a courtroom. I was the only dark, huge skin face in there. And I, they gave all my children to the woman and literally would no, you would think it would be because I was either doing drugs, I was doing drinking too much, beating the wife, abusing the none of that. Yeah. I lost yeah. them just because I kept the Shabbat. Well, well, and there's white people too. Two things about that number one is that all have sin, all who are born through the woman are born in sin, and once it is those who are born of the flesh are dying, they're not living, but those who are born again of the spirit. They are living because they were born of the Father. And so that's why um, I, I made the point that all, no one, women don't have love, right? So when they come through the woman, they're not getting love. They're only getting hate. But when you're born of the Spirit of the Father, that's when you return to love. So all are like that. That's why we must be born again of the Spirit of the Father because Jesus was born of the, Adam was born of the woman, Jesus was born of the Father. So that's why we must return to the Father. Then you will see, because women don't have love. Satan is their daddy. I agree with you. Women do not have love. Right, I because, agree with you. because Satan is their daddy, and God is the man's daddy. And the love comes from God through Christ, through the man, through the woman. But that I love agree. that comes from below comes from hell. That's why it doesn't work. Okay, I can see where you come from. And, and, and I, I can say I agree with you. Uh, I wouldn't say it that way, but I agree with you that women do not know how to love. They need a man. Because they don't have it, love. yeah. And they're not yeah. made to be leaders or anything. They're yeah. made to be fathers. But and, 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 man, man, man is the one. Women are not creating the image and glory of Yah. It's man. Man is creating the image and glory of Yah. Women is creating the glory of man. So yeah. a woman is incapable of loving. The only way a woman can show that she loves them, love is by obedience. Her obedience is the yeah. only form. Obey your it's, like a, it's kind of like a dog. And I'm not saying a woman's a dog, but... Uh, That's but what I be. heard you say. You said it kind of like a dog. <laughs> yeah, but kind of like a dog, if I would use the analogy, the only way a dog can love me is through her through, through her obedience or his obedience. But he can't love... I'm the one that can love. I'm the one that can provide food, shelter, everything the dog needs. That's the that's love. That's why we can't love God. We, so, don't, we can't love God. The only way we can show God love is through our business. That's why Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So, and that's how we show love. So let me ask. Um, and so racism, there's no such thing as racism, sexism, homophobism, Allahu Abbaism, white supremacism, uh, uh, or, or dead be dad is um okay, so what do you mean by that because you must mean something that i because i'm just hearing the word i'm like oh, i don't know what you mean by that but what do you mean? battle is a spiritual battle it's a warfare between good and okay. evil you're either of evil and so if you are of evil that's your nature and you're going to treat everybody with evil because you can't help it but then if you're born of god you're of love and you treat all people with love and so okay. if now when you break it down that way, I can I can see where you're coming from because like I said, in at Straightway Truth Ministry, even though people may say we're Israelites, I've actually been accused of being a black Hebrew Israelite, but we have 
uh, people that you will call Caucasian. We have all different types. We have multi, a multi-racial, if you want to use race, um, but we, we consider them Israelites. So, so but I can see what you're saying with, with that. that if the children racist. of the light is made up the word racism in order to deceive you, our battle is a spiritual battle, a warfare between good and evil. It's either right or either wrong. It's not Just, color. Yeah, I can agree with you. It has I nothing to do with color, male or female. It's the spirit. So mm -hmm. I got to put you on the hot we don't seat. Fight against flesh, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against power and principality. Absolutely. Okay, so, what's the hot seat? So I got, seat I, I got to heat this up. <laughs> Kabir, I got to put you on the hot seat. Okay. I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible, all right? Okay. The hot seat. Are black people the real Jews? Are they? Uh-huh. I believe them. Uh, um, I'll, I'll say a majority of them, yes. What is love? Obedience to Jesus Christ. What is a man? A man is me. <laughs> <laughs> Should women have the right to vote? No. Is America a Christian nation? Yes. <laughs> and that's not a good thing from my perspective. <laughs> Do you love the great white hope? No. I, don't, I mean, I don't know anything. I don't know who that is. <laughs> you don't know who the great white hope is? Rocky. <laughs> Do you live in America? You don't know the great white hope. I've heard of it, but I've never really heard of the, uh, oh, Donald Trump. And then I tweeted, you know, I have many millions between Facebook and Twitter. It's great. It's like owning a newspaper without the losses. It's incredible. <laughs> Okay. That's a great white hope. Okay, so what's the question now? So that now I know what you're talking about. Do you love the great white hope? I, I, I don't have, I have no qualms against him. I love Jesus. How about the great white hope? Do you love the great white hope? I, I, that's, a, that's a tough question. I mean, I don't have an issue. He hasn't done anything to me, so there's no reason. If, he's, if he loves Jesus, I love him. If he hates Jesus, I hate him. What a perfect hate. Do, did the Chinese virus occur naturally or was it made in a lab? Made in a lab. Do you support the Second Amendment? Yes, absolutely. Do you love white people? Uh, I, I love white people if, if they love Jesus. Do you support open borders? Uh, no, I don't. I don't necessarily support open borders. Um, yeah, yeah. In, in one word, how would you describe Joe Biden? Sleepy. What is a woman? Uh, a woman is a, that's a good question. I have a lot of, say. a woman, <laughs> a servant. <laughs> Did you have fun? I had fun. I had fun. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you for taking the hot seat and thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah. Tell the folks how they can keep up with what you're doing. Watch your stuff, buy your stuff or whatever you're doing out there. Let the folks know how. Well, hey, I'm part of a great ministry called Straightway Choose Ministry. If you want to check us out and see what more about what we do here at Straightway, check out straightway.com. Straightway, that's S-T-R-A-I-T-W-A-Y.com. And you'll see uh, the things that we're doing here. We could be a, a ministry in your uh, local area. So please reach out to us. So, right on. Again, thank you, Kabir, for coming on. I totally appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. All right. And God bless you. You too, thank you. Don't forget, folks, we have brand new merch. What the? The coffee mug, the, the, the stickers, and the shirt. Amazing. And it comes in all sizes, all colors for men and women, all right? So check it out. Don't forget to click on the Patreon link description to support our work. Uh, don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, share. Ring the bell. You can ring my bell. Ring the bell and let me hear from you. Thank you for tuning in. watching the fallen state we need your continued support donate to my nonprofit here subscribe and like the videos here and tell everybody and their mama about the show <laughs>